Hi, I'm Lee Partridge and welcome back to Colby TV for another midweek show. On the show this evening, we've got an exclusive interview with Joe Dunn. He'll be joining me here in the studio and also action and reaction from the weekend's fantastic performance and result against Salford. Uh, it's great to be watching and hearing the thoughts of people from uh, from that win. It feels like it's been a while, but uh, hopefully we're here now and uh, long may that continue. So let's start with those highlights against Salford. And also we'll be hearing from Wayne Brown what he had to say straight after the highlights themselves. <laughs> Uh, Wayne, what a terrific performance. Yeah, no, the lads did themselves proud today. Um, we knew that it was going to be a tough game, obviously. Uh, Salford are flying, um, flying high. Uh, they're on a good little run themselves. Um, but we knew they were going to be direct. We knew we had to stand up to that, win our individual battles, uh, win first balls, anticipate second balls. But we also knew the way that they play, there'll be opportunities for us to counter-attack. Um, and I thought we did that very well at times. Um, it shows the fitness levels of the fellas, bearing in mind that they played on Tuesday as well. Um, but what pleased me the most was the character, the determination to keep that clean sheet. Um, and again, you know, I'm proud of them and uh, they should be proud of themselves. See, sometimes goals chase games, change games. But well before your side got in front, I'm scratching my head wondering how you went in ahead already. Yeah, and again, that's testament to the lads. We, we ask for a reaction. Um, sometimes when you know, a, a new man comes in charge, you get a bounce off the lads. That was the plan. Um, but the all important bit today was to start the game and how we started our mentality, taking the game to them. Don't be sitting ducks, concentrate on what we're doing. Um, and I thought that we, we did that in abundance. And you know, it, was, it was evident to see with the chances that we created. You know, the irony is that you were the better side in the opening half hour in open play. And yet, it's a couple of set pieces that led to the goals. Yeah, that's right. And again, I don't think we've scored many from set plays this year. So that's a real big pleasing aspect. It's something that we've worked on um, in the short time that we've had, believe it or not. Um, even Scoose's chance, you know, we knew that they dropped back into the box and didn't really mark. So we knew that the cutback was on. He cut it back, he Scoose hit the post and then on another day it goes in. So really pleasing and, you know, the lads have taken that information on board and carried it out. As for the goals, great delivery from Alan Judge. That's what he's got in the locker. Everybody knows that Judge has got that in the locker. You know, he doesn't disappoint. And um, not only was he, he good from set plays, but he's put a, another good shift in for, for the team. And Luke Chambers with the header. Absolutely immense. 
you know, the, the goal's a bonus. Uh, it's the icing on the cake, if you like. Um, but he was immense, both him and Dallow, uh, both centre-halves. They, again, knew that they were going to be in a tough game with Big Smith coming into them, who's, who's, a, who's a massive asset for them and a big, big handful. But I thought we dominated him at times and, and competed really well against him. And Miles Kenlock, on his debut, you're leading 1-0, you send him up on his, on his debut and he gets the second. Yeah, really happy with Kenny. Uh, Kenny's not played a lot of football of late um, and it was one of those going into the game is how long he's going to last. But, you know, he's an experienced boy for his age. He's played a lot of football and I thought he managed himself well at times, um, getting the 90 minutes out of himself. And as I said, the, uh, the goal was a bit of a bonus for him. And we knew Salford would come out strong in the second half. And Shamal George did bring off a couple of really good saves. But for the most part, defensively, you looked after them very well. Yeah, it was about just trying to keep that line at the back as high as we could. The, don't get too deep, especially 2-0 up going into the second half. The worst thing we could have done is, is drop, give them territory, and then the second balls uh, that, that may have fell to them may, would be higher up the pitch, i.e. in the box. So I thought that our line was good, um, but again, I thought Sham come out for more in the second half and help the, help the team from set plays. And again, listen, that's what Sham's got. It, instincts, reactions, and bearing in mind, he's probably had about five days training he's been out for eight or nine weeks so again testament to him and then the third goal that is more brilliant play by Freddie Sears he had so much energy so much confidence so much quality and he set up Corey Andrews for a goal again you know the way we set up today was to, to counteract what they did but it was also important that we hit them when we could and you need energy energy levels to do that and, and Freddie was immense absolutely immense you know from from the first minute you know he's running channels intelligence that you know you're going to get from Freddie but the work ethic not just from him but throughout the whole squad that, that come in and, and took part today was absolutely immense and the only thing that I feel for Freddie is he didn't get his goal but you know he set one up and um, and that's all you can ask for the, from the boy. So that was head coach Wayne Brown speaking immediately after the game on Saturday the 3-0 victory at Salford and joining me now as I mentioned earlier doesn't really need an introduction, but I will, with a relationship here at Cultures that's spanning 26 years. We spoke about that before. 26 years as both a player and coach from the academy right the way through to head coach here at Cultures United. It's Joe Dunn. Joe, thank you for joining me. No problem. Um, so I suppose let's start, not at the beginning, the beginning, but the beginning over the last couple of weeks. Um, it's good to be back, I guess. And how did you get the call? Where did the call come from and who was it? Yeah, well, Wayne phoned me up on um, on Wednesday and said, look, um, is there any chance you can uh, come in and give us a hand to uh, as we go th towards the Salford game? I said, look, no problem at all. Um, I saw the result on the Tuesday night and, you know, so unfortunate. Um, but unfortunately, <laughs> in football, these things happen. And Wayne gave me a buzz and I said, of course, and uh, I'm not doing anything. So... Uh, Gladly come in and help the club. So when when you saw when you saw Wayne's name coming up, did you think oh, what's he want? <laughs> no, I did, just I thought I don't know whether he wanted to help out Malden or something like that, or <laughs> just asked me to to about a player or something, and then it transpired in, into the conversation it did, and here I am. And obviously you're pleased about that. It's great to have you back. When in this situation, now I guess you've been in it as a player as well, and everybody's different, but. Uh, when you come in, do you kind of speak to the players individually or is it a collective for yourself and Wayne or does everyone do it in a different way? I think uh, it, it depends, I suppose. When uh, when you go in and your first session is a Thursday and your game is a Saturday, you, you've got to really hit the ground running. So it's a collective. Um, the individual thing can be done uh, when and if and how. Like, for example, we stayed in a hotel on Friday, so we were able to pull some individuals to give them some information. But the, the key thing is, is what the manager wants to do really and how he wants to go about it. And uh, we just do it. And then, you know, you, you hopefully get the boy in. And, and, I, and like I said, in such a short turnaround, there's got to be a boy in. Um, so it's kind of like hit the ground running. You ain't got time. And we're just glad that over the last, the two days in the build-up to, to the Southwark game, we were able to get some work into it. And like you say, on a short space of time, did you get, and I guess, you, you know, obviously looking at the results and certain amounts of, of our games this season, but did you get a chance to look at any of the previous games uh, and maybe pick out bits of it that you felt could be changed, you know, and speaking to Wayne, of course, how you thought things could change? Yeah, well, the key thing was always um, the goal situation at the club and 
not having scored enough goals and, and of course um how can you how can you marry up getting goals and then obviously trying to keep them out both boxes um in terms of watching games myself i've i've kept in touch with with the club myself over the period of the of well since i've left here anyway um so i knew the the unfortunate situation from the the, the sudden game and um i know uh, hayden always felt there was goals coming and it was just how we get that structure to be able to um attack well also making sure that we're defensively tight and you know, hopefully going forward, that, that gives us something to and Because it's the same set of play with players all but, you know, it's the same uh, yeah, set of players. It's yeah. amazing how things... Uh, look, that's 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 football, I guess. That's the way it goes. Yeah. Uh, we've we've all been there, if you've ever experienced it. Um, sometimes, you you know, you'll probably scratch your head and go, well, hang on a minute, you know. Um, but look, at, at the end of the day, uh, we, we came up with a plan with the game at Salford and, and, it, and Saturday will be totally different again, so we'll see how it goes. And from a training perspective, and I, again, I know it's only been a very short space of time, so it's, I guess it's difficult to change so much in that space of time, but uh, are you aware of anything that you may be yourself and Wayne and Dave have changed within uh, the training structure at, at the moment? Or? Well, from my point of view, from a personal point of view, whatever happened before, you know, that I can't affect that. Yeah. Um, I can only affect on the first day that I go to the club and help out with some sessions and, and what the manager wants to build and the picture he wants to paint. Um, in, in, terms of, uh, in terms of sessions, standards, your standards, what you know as a coach, what you are as a manager, and you need to get those principles and standards across to the training ground and obviously work ethic and, and discipline is key. So you have it in your mind how you want to go, it's how you deliver it. Um, and you know, we like to work at a, I certainly like to work at a good intensity. Um, should the players know that you know you it's a way of life it's not just walk it's a way of life and what's expected and, and you as a player and as a coach i think we all know or anybody that knows you or has seen you over the years knows the passion and the commitment you play you play with and and that's what you would expect i'm not saying the players don't but i'm saying mm. that's what you expect i guess as, as a coach yeah you know? sometimes when uh, sometimes the type of player you you wear um if you try and transmit all of that into a culture, I think it's very difficult because each individual is different. They yeah. all learn in a different way. So the key aspect of coaching and managing is to know, trying to get to the individual and understand I can push him and I can probably just need a quiet word yeah. with him. Um, and that's something that I think I pride myself on, um, being able to try to get to the individual to make sure we can affect the individual in the way that collectively uh, it works for the club. So that's... And that's man management, I guess. That's yeah, what, I think when we talk about management, that's yeah. exactly what you're talking about. It's, it's a key thing in um, in in the game now. It's how you you manage the individual. Uh, conflict is, um, I think, it's rare now. So, diplomacy in in the right way to understand. As long as there's clear instruction, and clear responsibility, and, and clear dialogue between each individual. If I ask you to do something on the training ground, you know exactly what I'm asking from you. So I've got to make that clear to you. And uh, then we set down our principles and we see what happens. I'm a bit out players of need guidance. Listen, players need guidance. And that's, that's I'm a bit out of shape at the minute, so don't ask me to do anything. That's fine. Yeah. Joe's going to stay with us. Um, we'll have another chat very shortly. But we're going to hear from Luke Chambers. Chambers done many post-match interviews with us. And unfortunately, many of those have recently have been after defeat. So it's good to see what he's got to say off the back of that fantastic performance and win on Saturday. And this is what he had to say. Yeah, definitely. I think everyone, even the boys that came off the bench today, uh, affected the game. And it's always difficult when things change at a football club because at the end of the day, the players have to look at themselves in the mirror because we haven't been good enough over the last four or five months. Um, and ultimately, it's come in the manager losing his job. Um, obviously, Mr. Wayne Brown's come in. He's got some work into us this week, and the lads have responded to what's been asked, asked of them. So it's been an all round good performance. Yeah, it's a kind of, in a way, <clears throat> bittersweet reflection because. I'm, I wanted to talk about the wonderful display and what you're saying is we really need to take a time out and mention Hayden Mullins and Al Dyer and all their efforts and say that in some ways they were kind of let down by the players. Yeah, well, we haven't performed. As a group, as a football club, we haven't performed. Um, we find ourselves in a position that we don't want to be in, a position that none of us thought we would be in uh, pre-season. But again, 
that what's happened's happened. We can only respond to the game that was in front of us today, and we did that with a plot. And my word, did you respond this afternoon? But it was right from the very beginning. You're in their faces, taking the game to them, and creating chances. Yeah, I just felt we we managed to uh, implement the work we'd put on in the last couple of days, and the lads were on the front foot. It's a new opportunity for everyone in the squad. Uh, players played in a few different positions today at times. Um, you've got to mention probably Emir Hughes and Miles Kenlock coming in, not played so much football over the last few months and the effect they had on the team today was absolutely tremendous. Miles got, got his goal, even though I should have had my second one. Um, but yeah, the overall performance, I cannot pick out a, a situation where the lads didn't carry out the instructions that were given. There were so many good performances, even before you got in front, Cole Skewser then went off, uh, injured, hit the post, Freddie Sears one and one with the key ball, and Judge might have been fouled in the box, he dominated the game between the penalty areas, and then it's a set piece, great delivery from Alan Judge, and you with the header. Yeah, well we know Judge is in the team for that, um, he's put some tremendous balls on my head so far, two away at Swindon. Uh, one again today. I nearly had another one in the second half. But we've got players that can cause damage in set pieces. We, are, you look at the side today. It's quite a big side in terms of phys physicality. Um, we feel like we can be a threat. We worked on things yesterday, and they've come off again. So it's one of those days where, yes, we played very, very well. But the things we worked on, it's just one of those days where everything seemed to, to go in our favour. But I think that was down to, to the work and the work ethic the lads managed to, to pull out from somewhere today. But how important was after playing so well that opening half hour? And having gone so near to scoring, how important was that you got your side in front? Yeah, I think the last five or six games we've we've had so many not half chances, clear chances that we haven't capitalised on. So I do think that shows you the character that is in the group that we continued after 25, 20 minutes, and we didn't score those. They're glaring opportunities for us. Any other team that seemed to be going in against us like that, they would that would be a goal, and that's what that's the way football's been going for us over the last few weeks. Today. We nearly made another T-shirt for Cole Scoos and scoring a goal. Uh, want to be, but again, he was tremendous before he had to go off of an eye injury that the referee missed. I'm not sure there's a T-shirt for Miles Kenlock celebrating one of the goals he's got either. He gets you in the second. Were you, did you get you were involved in that? Yeah, I'll, I'll take the assist on that one. Um, but no, we're just delighted. I think the gaffer said there, just enjoy it because you have to enjoy today and tomorrow that you've gone, come away and put in a complete performance that could have been a lot more than three. Um, so we'll do that, but then work again starts Monday. And how important was it, even though when you were two, three nil up, how important was it to see the game out and make sure that the clean sheet you started with, you had at the end of the game? Yeah, well, that's what I was banging on about the last 10 minutes. We kept breaking. I was still trying to organise. I lost my voice just in the dressing room afterwards before I'd come off the pitch. So it's just one of them days where you're just so desperate for everything to go our way. And fortunately, I made a tackle at the end that stopped them scoring. Shan made a brilliant punch at the end he's come off his line and for him to be out such a long time with his broken ribs to come back in and give that display today again is, is credit to everyone involved today I haven't even talked about the fabulous counter attack Freddie sees and Corey Andrews finished it off because I wanted I noticed you in particular I think it was you in particular celebrating in front of the fans punching the air it meant so much to you and it meant so much to them football can be a lonely place at times um, you've always got your teammates but until people go through the everyday of what we have to put up with. Obviously, there's, there's a bit going on in terms of away from off the pitch. Um, but it's a lonely place at times when things aren't going well and you're scratching your head and you sometimes you feel you've played well individually and and you're just not getting the rub, rub of the green or you're not getting the results. So it is those days. I've been in football so long now that I feel that you've got to try and enjoy every single moment because the amount of people that have come up here to support us again today for this football club is tremendous. The way they travel, the way they do support us, you have to take your hat off to them. Yes, they're frustrated, but there's no more, there's no, there's no one's more frustrating than the players themselves in that dressing room because we're looking around and we're thinking, we've got to be better. And, and we're trying, we have today, it's, we've put that performance together and uh, hopefully we need to take it to next week. Luke Chambers there speaking after Saturday's performance. Good to hear Chambo uh, talk to us after that 3 0 win. Still with us now is uh, Joe Dunn. Uh, Joe, we've heard Chambo there talking and he's done quite a few post-match interviews and talk talks after the defeats. As a manager and as a coach, that's always difficult to do, but I guess it's part and parcel of it, isn't it? Even if you don't want to do it? Yeah, of course, after, after you find yourself in a situation where it's very difficult, either at the wrong end of the league or a heavy defeat, um, someone's got to do it. Um, Managers are always front up 
the coaches always front up um, and players also and normally it's the the go to with, with the experienced guys and um, you know look at it's part and parcel of the game um, if anyone needs that kind of media training there's plenty of it's available <laughs> yeah. so uh, it's something that we have to do and uh, that's it and because the media guys have got great respect for people like that I always have done throughout the years you know they need the questions answered and uh, you kind of understand it um, and Luke is obviously a senior is more senior pro so he's a good go to and I've seen one or two interviews from some of the younger players as well and they've spoke really well so um, it's it's something that is a necess necessary yeah it's like, so. and always difficult for younger players I suppose to yeah. find themselves because they're footballers, they want to be footballers. They, they don't want to find themselves in the media world. Well, but they're, sometimes yeah. they're thrown into it. They're good though, some of them, because they're, yeah. they're they're honest um, and they speak from the heart when they're young. When you're a little bit older, a little bit more wiser, you can um, use it more articulate. But uh, I like I like hearing a lot of the young yeah. ones because uh, they tell it how it is, like yeah. And um, it's uh, yeah, it's one of those things. Um, what have you been up to recently prior to coming coming back? Oh, here? Uh, we've, uh, We've moved house from Suffolk to back to Colchester. Just moved back to Colchester as a family. Um, with my 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 kids are a lot older now. And, um, they they they're in Colchester working at different things, and um, it's just an opportunity to come back to the town. That I've spent a lot of time in, uh, but other than that, nothing much. Just watching football, um, a lot of non-league football. Really, kind of switched off a bit from a lot of the other stuff. Uh, just I've been in it such a long time, and it just opportunity arose to spend it you know intentionally and not intentionally mm -hmm. to to spend a bit of time away from the game and that might be it's quite good i should imagine because you've from a young age it's been mm -hmm. football football just to uh, rather than it being a work capacity clear your mind of that and just from an enjoyment point of view yeah um yeah football when you're in it on on air level when i say air level i mean uh, position of responsibility uh, you know it, it, people don't understand unless you've done it it's takes a huge toll on you, yeah. uh, takes, requires a lot of commitment. Um, but over the years, I've started to uh, manage it a lot better and, and, and advice I offer, because I'm now in the position to, yeah. having been at a few clubs and done a lot of games now, uh, how how you can offer advice from having done this stuff where you 24 seven, like consistently. Uh, but it's given me, a, it's, it's given me a, an opportunity to kick back and probably enjoy watching um, Funnily enough, I'm going to say the World Champs with City play and yeah. uh, watching watching Louis and I think you're going to touch on. Yeah. Um, watching a lot of other non-league game as well, just to uh, step back a bit from it. Because, well, I, I know quite a few people in the game and what people sometimes don't realise is when you're in it, at the level you're in it, probably more so than a player, you live and breathe it every single minute. If you're not careful, you know, you'd be sitting at home thinking about the game that's coming up or the game that's gone as opposed to maybe if you're a player, you can part that sometimes. Is that right? Oh, no, you're correct, yeah. I mean, uh, just ask my family. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 just ask them. It was uh, absolutely... Uh, football's an obsession for me. It's an obsession. It's not. It's nothing other than that. Tactical, tactical shapes help players develop. Learning from people all the time because you don't get stale. You just keep learning. And, and I've had plenty of time to, to observe and, and see and... Yeah, it's, 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 football's just a wonderful, it stores so many emotions. Talking about your family, talking about your, your lad, Louis, you've been watching him quite a bit yeah. recently. That must be great. So proud to watch, watch your yeah, son I play. I do, do go on a disguise, mine. <laughs> James for after the FA Cup. The people, I keep oh. saying, someone knows. But uh, I do, I enjoy, I think, um, Robbie, is, Robbie Simpson down there is, is doing a wonderful job. Uh, I've, I can see the project he's trying to, to develop. He's got a lot of good young players in that team with some good senior pros and uh, having a right you know it's, it's a difficult difficult league to play in and, and be in but uh, I, I enjoy watching it I enjoy watching it there's a lot of honesty again and I'm watching Louis play of course and just seeing how how teams uh, in and around that area and uh, in those leagues are, are developing so well and, and becoming more of an extension of, of what of league of league football you know so it's becoming very much more professional players are more professional you know uh fit fitness levels are super high and i think um it's great credit to to, to the teams that are trying and when you're watching your, your lad play 
do you speak to him afterwards regarding maybe the game, the performance? And do you, uh, <laughs> have you got your, your parents' head on or have you got your coaching head on or do you have to balance the two things? Um, well, the one thing that I've always done with uh, Louis because he was, he, I mean, he, this would be a nostalgia moment for um, for all those watching this that are, remember the Astro Turf at Lair Road yeah. out the back. He That's where he started, you know. He started on the Astro Turf in the car park out the back where we used to park our cars on match day and, and that he, that's, that's his affinity with the club. And the one thing that I've, I've, I've always only as a parent of somebody in the game, of, of being there if he needs me, I've always wanted him to try and learn and develop his own way. Yeah, um, He's different to me. He's different to me. He's different to me as a player and he's certainly more, um, from a coaching point of view, he, he's got a good future in the game if he decides to go that way. Uh, because he's walking at it, he walks. He walks really, really hard, along with all the other guys that I've seen walking alongside him. But from a parent point of head, I was only ever there as a parent when he was younger, really, um, to to maybe be emotions. Because, like I said, you, you've got to experience all that and to make your own decisions. And um, I, I mainly speak to him. Uh, it would be one or two tactical points, just if he ever asked me, and offered to say, "Look, there's a moment here where this that, but never, never suffocate." You know, he's, he's his own man. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And and also, touching on the academy here, and, and you've worked within the academy, and now you're working with some of the players that are coming through the academy. You know, that must be good as well. Yeah, because that, you're, you're, you're very passionate about yeah. young players, developing young players. Yeah. That That's, uh, yeah, it's something I was driving here today, thinking whether, you know, things to say and so on. In the case, I, I'm a great believer. I love working with young players. I love trying to affect people. It's yeah. just trying to make them better. Um, giving them options for, for decisions and I've always liked working with young players um, and developing young players uh, as what I've noticed in the game is a lot more of the senior players now when I'm talking about mid to late 20s maybe even in the 30s now they're, start, they're, they're still looking for things that can that can help them and I think that's, that's a real big difference that I've noticed in the game but academy I mean uh, it's funny because Liam Bailey is, has had great success here with the under 18s you know, did really well Played Newcastle, beat Arsenal. And yeah, did really well yeah. against Newcastle. As well, Liam was part of my youth team here, and um, it's great to see yeah. Liam now passing on like uh, what he wants is what his vision is for those young players uh, from a development point of view. Um, because we have to forget, like, young people always learn differently. The every year they're changing the way they mentally grow. Yeah. and I just we've got two or three young players here. And certainly, I haven't had a chance to see probably the others because of we've got time at the moment because of the focus on the main first team. But um, I've always liked developing players, even when I was manager here. Um, you know, working in League One, it was all about developing players. It was all about trying to develop their attitudes and working with them and just trying to make people better. And that must you must take a lot of pride from that when you see um, the success stories. Yeah, it's a collective thing, you know. That they, they pass through each coach that they've walked with over a period of time and everyone will give them something different. Um, and along the way, if you've helped in that journey, because there's so many other people who've also helped in that journey, it, it's great. But um, you you want to be testing young players to be able to test their, their brain capacity to be able to take on information practically and, and technically to be able to say, right, go on in your place in the team. And when you're there, it's not a big issue. Yeah. And I think you've seen that with a lot of the players here that have gone on to do well. Um, they were that type. Right, yeah, you've yeah. that experience. Yeah. Got to ask you before before we go, uh, your thoughts on the Swindon game at the weekend. Yeah. How do you see that going? Hopefully a win, but uh, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think uh, a, a different game to the Southwood game, of course. Uh, different styles. I think uh, Van Garner has gone in there and done a, a wonderful uh, job in terms of how he wants to structure his team to play. I think they're getting a lot of plaudits for the way that they're playing. A friend of mine is, of course, on the staff there who used to play with at Gillingham, so it'll be good to see him again. Um, but in terms of the game, tough. Look, when when you're in air position, every every game is tough. Yeah. And we want to pick up as many points as we possibly can. We need to be correct in our mentality. We need to be correct in our motivation. And our attitude to, to the game has got to be one where, uh, you know, it's it's 100%. It's 100% because they've got the players that can can do what 
they need to do to win games. They've proven that where they are in the league. But um, we need to take confidence from what we did against Salford and move forward and our preparation is correct going into the, to the game on Saturday. Joe, it's great to talk. It's great to listen um, about all the aspects uh, and your thoughts on players, football, etc. You're a credit to the club and it's great to have you back here. Thank you. Uh, and uh, fingers crossed for Saturday. And we'll yeah. speak to you again, hopefully Brilliant. soon. Yeah. Great, great to have you back. Thank you. Uh, talking to Swindon, let's uh, take a look at a previous game uh, against Swindon. And these are the highlights in, well, I won't tell you what the result was, but it was a win. Look for yourselves. Great win for us there, and let's hope for more of that on Saturday against Swindon. If you haven't already got your tickets, do go across to colutickets.com. If you do want to contact us here in the studio for maybe the midweek show, you want to say hello to someone, or of course on match days on the big screen, or messages or stuff in the programme, of course you can do that. Media at colchesterunited.net. That's media at colchesterunited.net. Dot net. That's about it from me. Harry Totten will be in the hot seat right here for your pre-match show on Saturday, starting about half past two. Until next time, that's about it from me. Have a great week and it's goodbye for now.